What's up guys? Last time we set up C Sharp for DLVM, again, this time with the new LSPs, Roslyn and uh, Razor Language Server. And everything so far so good, but I left you with topics not covered. One of them being configuring the NVIM DAP UI. And as you might remember, I complained last time over the UI that you get when you don't configure anything, which is in my view, a way too cluttered, confusing experience. And it's much better to have a more streamlined experience where you see just what you need to see. And this is what we're going to do today. We're going to streamline the UI and also you get a little bonus at the end of the video where we're going to talk about pragmatic debugging approaches and how to debug actually large objects that have a lot of levels that you would have to pick yourself through just to find the property that you actually want to debug. We're going to solve this problem today. So grab a beer and lean back and let's just dive into that thing right now. Enjoy. So what you see right here is the NeoVim debugging UI configuration that you know from the last video. This is the minimal configuration that you can get to have a debugging UI in the first place. That looks like this. So this is a console application. I do a breakpoint. The breakpoint is a B, right? And now I'm going to hit a 5 to debug. And this is what I see. I see the locals. I don't know what that is. I see the threads I'm not interested in. I see all these play buttons. I never click these buttons I'm not interested in. I don't use expressions. I don't have something on the watch. If I'm honest, I only want to have the locals and I'm fine with that, right? So today what we're going to do is we're going to set up the UI in a way that it looks like this. Again, I have a console application, hit F9, breakpoint looks beautiful, I hit a 5 and I only see locals. That is all I see. Maximum decluttering right here. And I'm going to walk you through an article that I just wrote that looks like this, that describes the config that are actually applied right here. So just walk line by line, just walk through. As always, this is what we've seen in the old configuration. When I go back, boom, boom, boom. This is the old config, didn't change. So these lines right here just say, in the moment we start debugging, open the UI. Nothing special right here. Go back to the article. Uh, breakpoint design. Yeah, is this, this configuration is responsible for the breakpoint design. And you really just paste in the text that you have from a website like like this one right here. I mean, I can open it, I guess. Open a website. Oopsies. If you type in circle and you go for emojis, then you see everything that is round right here. You, you can put anything that you like. Go copy and put that into your configuration like this. This is exactly what I did, right? So you can just copy this and you have beautiful breakpoints. Next thing, the actual options of the dub UI setup. This is what in the normal configuration is just empty. We're gonna configure this today so you get the minimalized UI. So I do believe it makes sense to first read the documentation of the scopes window. I have it open right here already, I believe. No, I don't, I opened the link uh, right here. So this is the plugin that we're talking about, right? Uh, NVIM dub UI, and down there we have the scopes. The whole NVIM DAP UI is made of layouts, and the layout can be a different thing. One of them is the scopes. The scope layout is where we see our locals. So to go back to this example, this is the scopes layout, and there's other layouts too. We're going to focus on this one right now because we're going to ditch all of the rest anyways. That being said, I go back into the configuration article, And when I go to expand lines to this setting, true, that just means any text, I hope I'm in the right, this is the right window. If that text right here would be longer than the scopes window can take, it would just be extended. It would overlap into our actual code. This is what the setting is doing. I mean, you've seen this already, I guess. Uh, next setting is the controls. We don't want to have controls. The controls is this thing right here. We don't want to see that. Next thing is the floating. If you have a floating window, you want to have a rounded border. I mean, at least I want to have that. Then the next thing that is interesting is the render property. This basically says how much space is taken by text, how much text is actually rendered. And when I go and I want to see what max value lines actually is doing inside the render thing, I could now go and copy this, look in the documentation, and I see I, would, I wouldn't find anything. So on GitHub, you don't really find anything, but it says, you can go a colon h dap ui setup and there you would get the full documentation and this is exactly what i'm going to do now so i go on my, my new of them 
execute this one right here in the command line. So I can go for max value lines then and see, okay, max value lines means maximum number of lines to allow a value to fill before trimming. And the other thing is the max type length. And now that we know the, what max value lines is, we can also guess that max type length is that when you have a type, that it, it can only be 60, in this case, digits long. This is what rendering is doing. It's determining how long a text can be rendered in your layout window. So down here we have the layouts and then we say elements scopes. We don't want to have any other elements. We only want scopes. We only want this thing right here, this thing. And then what you do is within that layout, you determine its size. So now, okay, we want to have 100% of, of its panel. That's correct. And the other thing is, as it's in the comments right here, the height in lines. So we want to be this thing, 15 lines of text maximum. So again, I go back and when I go here, this should be one, two, three, four, five, 15 lines long. Okay. This space right here is 15 lines of code. This is what this setting is saying. Okay. Position bottom speaks for itself. And this is all the configuration for the layout. This is the configuration you need to make it look like this. You have beautiful breakpoints. You have a nice pragmatic approach. You only see the locals. That's the only thing you want to see. At least that's the only thing I want to see. I'm coding for enterprise grade customers for eight years now, and I never needed anything else than the locals. I never needed watch windows. I never needed threads. I never need any of these. I really just needed to know what is inside law. And what you can do from here, just a quick tip, you can, you can hit E, boom, and then you can change that value in case you want to while debugging change that value. The things that you would know from your previous IDE that you're not using anymore, like Rider or Visual Studio Code or something. You, you, can, you can do the same thing right here. Now we have custom mappings. This is just, you know, little helpers that I wrote for myself. So um, I just start with this one, leader du. So when I go back and I want to toggle this window, I'll do leader du that toggles this window, right? Easy thing. Then I have leader dw, which opens a little floating window over the word under the cursor. Like when I go here and leader w, then you get this, right? You get a little floating window. The last binding I have right here is decouple the queue. And when, when you read the bindings, then you see that it's almost the same as leader uh, DW. It's almost the same thing, except when I do leader DW, I can actually do evaluations and expressions. And with capital the queue, I cannot really do that. So I debug right here, I go over this variable, I do leader DW, and I can do an expression like, law plus this is a string a so if i want to append something else to that like x x x x it would now give me this as whole anyways it would give me this this is leader dw and now i quit and now i i do as opposed to that i do couple the q boom and with enter i would just leave it would just really quickly open this window and this is because the options right here that we gave into DW are not given here. So it's just a quick open and leave. So you can choose what you want to have. And just to show you, this is the full configuration, how it looks like right now. We talked about this part right here. We talked about the breakpoint design. We talked about the minimal UI setup. And this is the 70 lines of code. This is everything you need to configure to have the experience that I have. Next section in the article, pragmatic debugging of complex types. I mean, I put it right here. If you can avoid it, don't. Just do not do it. Okay, but I mean, why do we have this section right here? It is because, as I go here, uh, one of the comments under the last video is from Mickey Ermakov, 2420 if I read that correctly. And he says, hi, thanks for the video. Also switched to Roseland, doop de doop de doo The main pain I have right now is format of local VARs in the debugger. Objects, collections have so many private props I need to dive three plus layers to get the actual data. What is the man even talking about? What is he talking about? I wrote, I wrote under that, solve your problem video coming soon. This is the video. We're gonna look at this right now. So what is he talking about? So what you have right here is a real world example of real world unit test that actually is debugging through a super large object. This is a so-called business partner, which is an SAP object. And some of you might be familiar with that and know that they can get very large. And to show you what very large is, set a breakpoint right here, hit debug. 
go down and now typically you would go by the way your writer and visual studio friends do that too you would go and look for a certain property certain property until you have that maybe it's somewhere here probably i don't know so let's say we would look for the for the address id right whatever that is or let's something more unique that looks unique additional street prefix name cool now that it's open that's fine i i looked for it once i can now go debug again And now that the scope already has been open and expanded, I can go, since that is a buffer, I can just use text search. And that's good enough. And it wouldn't be so painful if you wouldn't have to expand the whole tree <laughs> until you're here initially, right? So how would you do that usually? I would completely avoid doing this kind of thing. So I would go and just introduce a new var that goes, I don't know, like target and then go for the business partner and look for any property and then just pull out the exact property that I'm looking for and debug this thing. And this is what I did all my professional life that I just pull out the properties that I actually need the values of and I don't really care about the full object. And this got me through so far. So this is the recommendation, right? Don't just don't, avoid debugging complex types, debug primitive types instead. Go for ins, double, char, etc. right? Go for the primitive types, avoid complex types. But if you still have to, for whatever reason, what you can do is you can use a plugin that I wrote for that specific purpose, which goes by the name Rambo DAP Scope Walker. And the way to use that goes like this. Go back into the code, set my breakpoint somewhere here. Boom. And now how this thing works, I go with Control J and I go DAP Scope Walk I look for any property, right? Let's go validity start date. And then the thing would just walk through the object until we add the property that we're looking for and highlight that thing. And that's how we know we're done. And now, since that thing is opened, I can now go copy that thing, debug again. And now that the scope is still opened, I can now use the text search and look for that property. So this is how you would use that thing and how you would work with the DAP scope walker. I wrote a little readme right here, right? A little, little nice GIF animation so I know what it's doing. And the installation is really just, you already, if, if you came so far, you already installed the utils like so. And this gives you automatically, once you update with LazyVim, the scope walker and then the installation looks like this. In your init Lua or somewhere, you, you require that package, execute the setup method. And if you want to, you don't have to put some options inside. Configuration is right here. Explanation of the configuration is also right here. DAP scope walk, whatever property you have, and that is it. So that was it for today. We talked about configuring the NVIM DAP UI. We talked about pragmatic debugging in C Sharp. And next time we're gonna have a look at the formatting with Conform and C Sharp here, especially if you have to work with editor configs and stuff like that. If formatting across the team matters, this is gonna be interesting for you. That was it for today. I wish you all a lovely week. Bye-bye.